Hey y'all, so welcome back and welcome to a long overdue life update video from me. It's not gonna be my typical get ready with me where I do my makeup because Makeup is done because I got some more to be this afternoon, but I do really, 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 really need to wash my brushes. If you missed my last video, I literally had two new sets of brushes that I got in the mail and those were all my clean brushes because I have like five little mostly tiny detail brushes left out of all my brushes because the rest are dirty. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six full of brushes that are dirty, majority of them eyeshadow brushes, and I really need some clean brushes before I can get back into doing makeup on a regular basis and just having fun with makeup, mostly. So I wanted to take this opportunity. I have about 30 minutes before I gotta get going and do another stuff, but I'm gonna sit down, talk to you guys, chit chat with you guys a little bit while I clean my makeup brushes and tell you guys a little bit about what's going on, what's been going on in my life since March, because I think it was the beginning of March, and then I've just kind of ghosted YouTube. I think I put out maybe two videos since then. It's been a little rough, so so that's why I figured we can chat about. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. I, I'm not gonna be able to show you me washing brushes. I was trying to find my bigger lens so I could be a little bit more farther out and you guys could see maybe some of the cleaning but I don't know where that lens is, so it's just gonna be my face, I apologize. I got a lot of brushes, so I'm just gonna talk and work at the same time because I like to multitask, so let's get into it. or I was sick. I am recovering. I got a, like a head cold, a cough, sore throat, lost my voice, that whole thing. So if I sound a little rough, it's just because my voice has been very slow to return because it's just like, it's very slow to return. So that's why I might sound a little bit different. But for cleaning, I'm gonna be using my makeup brush cleaner from Cinema Secrets. Love this stuff. And it's literally the only way I clean my brushes because I rarely have time to actually do them in the sink with soap and water like you're supposed to deep clean them. But at least for eyeshadow brushes, this works really well. And then I try to, on occasion, um, make sure I, I use my face brushes, nice, good soap and water on occasion. But today, they're all getting that treatment because if I don't do that, it's not gonna get done at all. So anyway, yeah, what's been happening? Um, a lot, <laughs> as I said. I feel, I think it was the beginning of March that I just kind of disappeared off of YouTube and it's because we got a dog. First dog I've ever had as an adult. I've mentioned before I've had a couple, uh, I think two dogs in my childhood slash um, young adult life, like preteen teen. And uh, both of them I obviously didn't do a ton with because getting a puppy now as an adult just threw me for a like threw me for a world that doesn't sound right just threw me for a loop that's the word i was looking for it threw me for a loop i did not anticipate how hard it was going to be i thought it would take me a week or two to get my groove and just kind of learn the puppy and like integrate it with our family no 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 as much as bringing a new baby home from the hospital that's what i should have anticipated going into bringing home a puppy because it was that intensive or or I should say harder like for me in many ways I feel like it was harder than bringing home a baby from the hospital and I've had I have four children so I've done it a couple times bringing home a baby no 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 this puppy was so hard <laughs> I know some of you left a comment in a previous video when I mentioned the reason I'm gone off of YouTube is because we brought home a puppy but yeah we have chickens we have rabbits we have cats we have a uh, pigs all those animals were a walk in the park to bring into our family compared to bringing a dog. A dog is literally to me in like the amount of intensity it takes for me, like my focus and my attention and my time, it's as intensive as a child. Holy cow. And that's something I just really didn't anticipate. Like like I said, I knew a puppy, everyone talks about how much time it would take, but oh my goodness, I think the biggest like mistake I made in not planning was that you have to watch them at all times there no there's no like oh letting them run in the backyard and get out some energy with the kids and no 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 it's like you have to be there all the time making sure they're everyone's learning children and dog how to play with each other because nobody knows how to play with each other and it can easily get too rough you have to watch the puppy at all times because puppies like to eat things that they shouldn't even if they don't taste good and we have a lot of animals our dog loves poop chicken poop rabbit poop pig poop probably his own poop if we left it out it doesn't matter if he find if he finds any kind of poop around the yard he's like zeroed in trying to eat it and that that's disgusting for starters and just a no-go i have no idea if it would make him sick but it's just disgusting so yeah you, i couldn't just like let him run outside by himself and like i said he'll eat everything so he eats like every leaf and we have a lot of like wild plants that grow around us that he can't eat 
So yeah, it was just a lot. And then inside the house, especially that first week, like he didn't want to be a part at all. We had to do, we crate train because I need my sanity. So he needed a place like now, right now he's taking a nap in his crate. He is ready for a nap. All my children are down for a nap, got everyone synced up. But uh, in the beginning he wasn't crate trained. So that was a lot because if he was in a crate, and if he was tired and if he was in his crate and we were in the room, he was okay. But the minute we stepped out, the minute I stepped out of the room, my children could be there, but if I stepped out of the room, he flipped. And then when we first brought him home, we brought we bought a like a, a pen. It's not a, a crate, but it's like a bigger kind of pen to keep him in, to just have him in one area so he could get accustomed to it. We could work on potty training and the whole house didn't overwhelm him. And he didn't like being in there alone. So I think the first three, four days, like I literally had no life except to be in the pen with him or if he was asleep in his crate, then I could like go and do stuff. But at the same time, I also have four children. So it was a little chaotic because my youngest at the time was like six months, seven months, six, seven months. So I would be like taking care of the dog, but I'm being trying to nurse, but the puppy wanted to like jump on me and play with me, but I'm trying to nurse my little child, but then I needed to like put her to sleep and she was used to being rocked to sleep in a quiet room. But if I went into the quiet room to rock her to sleep, the puppy would be yapping and yelling in the crate. That first week was rough. <laughs> there were so many times I was like, we messed up. Like I thought I had researched a ton. Oh my goodness, I thought I, we made a huge mistake. It's getting easier and as much as it's been painful, it's something that we've been wanting to do forever. We've been wanting to bring a dog into our house, our household, into our family for a long time now and puppies are just a lot of work in general so I'm glad we're doing it now because like I said my youngest is six seven months she's almost eight months now so it's getting easier with her she's overall a very good baby anyway and I'm not pregnant so I don't have to worry about dealing with that in a puppy so it's a good time for us to have a puppy but it doesn't make the process any less easier let's put it that way it's still been a painful process oh my goodness so yeah that first week I mean I, I was barely surviving literally just barely surviving from one day to the next and my husband could couldn't take that week off but he was able to get the following week off just from eh, it's a long story you guys don't care but anyway he couldn't take that first week off so it was just me and the four kids and the new puppy who didn't want to be left alone at all and that was very intense I don't think I even mentioned it but if you didn't know we bought a European Doberman so he's a, going to be a bigger dog and even as a puppy he's a pretty big dog and by the end of the week he could not only jump up on the crate or not the crate, but on, uh, he could jump up onto the top of the little cage that we had, the pen, that's a better word for it, the little pen that we had, he could jump up and he could kind of like, he couldn't jump over, but he could disturb it enough to like almost topple it. And so then I was like, okay, this is too small of a place. I can't do anything. Like literally I couldn't do anything. Couldn't clean, couldn't cook nothing so we ended up widening the pen and sectioning him off in the kitchen so that he had a bigger area to explore and i could live basically i could work in the kitchen making food i could clean up in the kitchen i could do stuff and he was a lot more comfortable because i was nearby so he could go roam and explore as we gave him a little bit of a bigger area to you know get used to the house and i could get stuff done in the kitchen and i could cook and all that that was a much better setup i think i did that after uh, three days. So when I made that change, it definitely got easier, but it was still hard. And because we had, um, instead of the pen being connected like a circle, that's how it was, it was stretched across like flat, kind of like, uh, not stacked, but zigzagged so that it could support itself. And we had it like that, but because it wasn't connected, he could definitely, after a couple days being in there, he could uh, jump on it and he figured out if he kind of was aggressive enough with the jumping, he could push it down or wiggle it enough to open it and get out. So by a week and a half, I was like, okay, I think we're just gonna have to let him come to the rest of the, you know, come in the rest of the house. He's kind of gotten used to us. He was doing a little bit better with the potty training. So uh, by a week and a half, he was kind of allowed to the whole main house and he's still um, in that same area we've sectioned off the bedrooms we have a hallway that goes down to the laundry room where the cat's litter box is which I definitely don't want him getting anywhere near because knowing his history with poop he'd probably eat that but we have the um, laundry room down the hallway and then all the bedrooms and we just put a baby gate over the hallway that the cats can get over but he can't and he has the main living area of the house and it's been a lot better since then uh, it's pretty rough with the cats. If you have any tips for how to get dogs and cats to get along, I would be all ears. Now, our problem isn't that they're aggressive. Our problem is that the cats are very good, I guess you could say, in that they're not mean to the dog. 
but they're also not a, 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 they're, it's also bad because they're not very aggressive and assertive with telling the dog like no you can't step on me and like squish me because he's going to be a big dog remember this he's a doberman so he's going to be a big dog um, but our cats are very like easy going and he'll come at them and literally step on them. I don't think he's being aggressive at all. He never growls, he never does anything. He's just so excited. He comes over and he like steps around them and steps on them and then like nuzzles them and not really bites. Every now and then I'll see him open mouth, but it's always a very big open mouth. He never bites down on them. I think he just wants to play. But again, he's a big dog, they're small cats, and he gets to the point where he's being too rough with them and then the cats get all mad and like get all hissy and scratch at them. And yeah, so right now, even though it's been a month and a half going on two months of him living here and they have plenty of time to like when he was in the pen in the kitchen in the pen they had a good week and a half almost two weeks of just seeing each other not making any contact we still have to always be on our toes whenever the cats are inside the house now our cats are inside outside cats so i always am very relieved whenever they're outside and he's inside or he's outside and they're inside because then i don't have to worry about it but other than that we're very strict on teaching the leave it alone, leave it uh, command, and trying to distract him and give him something else to do when they're around. But I'm a mom of four, and I can't always be on top of it. So there's definitely been times where he is, uh, you know, I'm not right there next to him to grab his uh, little house line, and he'll go for them, and then they'll get all, you know, mad and hiss at him and scratch, you know, scratch towards him. They don't use their nails often, so it doesn't really teach him much except to be like, oh, cool, you want to play? And then it just makes him mad and so it's it's been weird we had to go take him to the ER it's been a little rough when it comes to the vet and us like like I said he likes to eat stuff he shouldn't but then also the ER we had to go the other night because one of the cats again he got a hold of one of the cats he was playing rough with them and the cat didn't like it I wasn't there I was putting the baby to bed but my husband said like he went at them and they just timed they timed it perfectly with their little claw and she poked him in the eyeball like literally my husband said when they put the stuff to see what was wrong with his eye because it was so fast my husband didn't see the cat and him connect but they said there was just a little tiny like poke into his eyeball or like his I forget it was an eyeball or the third apparently dogs have a third eyelid it's really weird it goes this way and then they close anyway it was something it was a poke in his eye and it was pretty it was pretty painful for him but uh, after it happened like his eye was all sorts of swollen he wouldn't open it so we took him in because we didn't know what happened Turns out the cat got him right in the eye. Like I said, they're usually they're really not aggressive. Even now, like, even now with all of that, because we talked to a couple of people and they're like, oh, like maybe now he'll learn his lesson, right, and leave the cats alone. Nope. He still goes for the cats just as much as before. So if you literally, if you have any tips besides just keeping on the training of like leave it and uh, you know interrupting him and distracting him, uh, we have him on a house line, which is basically just a leash that drags the ground. So the minute I see one of the cats come around, I grab it to ensure <laughs> that he can't get to them, and then I t tell him leave it. And if you know he leaves it and looks at me. I reward him and stuff like that and then if he doesn't listen to me I just bring him back and make him leave it alone and use it as a teaching method or a teaching moment but boy that is a very exhausting aspect of having him because like I said you know mom of four four little kids to take care of and I have to always be on top of a dog and always know where the cats are it's best in the middle of the day because whether the cats are inside or outside they find a place to sleep most of the day so it's really only really bad and like I have to be on my toes in the mornings and at night but still, it does, it just gets a little tiring. So anyway, um, I feel like I'm just complaining. Let me regroup for a minute. I don't mean to this video to be all complainy, but I did want to update you guys on like what's been going on and the dog and cats friendship not happening or whatever you want to call it has been a big part of it. But anyway, so yeah, I had to totally get off YouTube or just stop uploading to YouTube because I had one video I had pre-recorded but I just I could not find time especially that first two weeks I literally had no time and also you know when you first bring a puppy home they're not potty trained I was getting up in the middle of the night so the first two weeks anytime that nap time correlated with his nap time in the crate I conked out like I was just out like a light I could not do anything else I didn't even try because I was just so tired because along with him getting up in the middle of the night I have you know three other children that would it's always happens at least somebody gets up in the middle of the night a bad dream having to go potty who knows and then also I had Sophia who's seven months now but was around six months then and she was starting to teeth and so she was getting up a lot so I was exhausted and I just could not edit and then 
yeah, that was two, three weeks of just surviving. I think by the three week mark, I was like starting to get the hang of it. I think I mentioned, but my husband was able to take that second week off when, um, we, after we got the dog. So it was nice having him there and it was just nice kind of figuring things out and having another set of hands around the house. And then week three, you know, once again, learning to do it all by myself again when my husband went, went back to work. But by the end of the three weeks into the four weeks, I was like, okay, think I'm getting the hang of it. Within a month, I would say he was potty trained at night. He's really great at night. Like we'll put him to bed and within uh, two, three weeks, I don't think I was getting up at all. I think I did it for a solid two weeks. And then the third week, I feel like I was almost waking him up at night to go potty because I'd be so light, like such a light sleeper. I'd be like, wait, I think he's moving around. And I'd get him up and take him outside and he would just kind of sit there and look at me. And then there was a couple nights like I just slept past waking up and I was like, oh wait, he, he went through the night. So by three weeks, I wasn't getting up at all. So that was nice and I started getting more sleep and whatnot. But, uh, um, and then I think week four, he also, my husband had like a long weekend, I think it correlated with a holiday or something. So about a month, I felt like I was starting to get the hang of it. I was starting to get more time. And I forget when I posted my nomad review video, but it was roughly around then where I was like, okay, I was able to eke out some time then. I, it kind of gave me an idea of how to, you know, set up my day to be able to record. So I was like, maybe I can start recording and, you know, like do one video a week and come back to YouTube. And then like right after that, I got sick. <laughs> I got sick and uh, it was right after the whole um, what do you call it, it was right after the whole uh, emergency vet visit oh my goodness uh, right after that and I think I was starting to feel a little bit like of a sore throat coming on I think I was just tired and stressed out and all that and then that happened that night and my th sore throat continued to get worse and I woke up the next day very very sick and that's been me the last two weeks and I feel like I still sound kind of sick um, I don't feel bad, like my throat doesn't hurt and all that, but I'm still congested and still my throat doesn't sound right. So it has been taking a very long time to kind of clear up and go away, but it probably has to do also with just sleep and all that because like I said, still not sleeping great. Um, even though Zoro is now sleeping through the night, like I said, Sophia started like really teething and then she got sick with me and oh my goodness, it's been very rough to teeth and have congestion and all that at the same time in a cough so it's been a rough couple weeks around here but now that we're over with that I think I'm getting close to being able to get back to like I said uploading once a week I think I can try and aim for that no idea if I'm going to be able to keep it, but we're starting to get into a routine like today where um, Zora's usually ready, ready for a good nap when the kids go to bed. And I mean, maybe it's the, you know, the beauty of having a very loud family, but he naps once during the morning shift, probably around like nine-ish. He's ready for a nap and he'll go in his crate and sleep, but we're a big loud family. I have two boys that are, what is it, five and three. It's really quiet, so when nap time comes around and the whole house is quiet, he's usually ready to just sleep like I used to try to be like oh nap time is when I can train him this is perfect you know get some training in when the house is quiet but I would try and he was just like uh, -uh I'm sleeping so he usually wants to sleep for the entirety of nap time and that works out well for me because it gives me a break from everybody it makes it a little bit trickier to get good training in with him just because I have to do it when everybody's awake but we're figuring it out, we're getting there. We're doing some training. Uh, let's see, he knows to sit, he knows stay, he knows lay down, he knows down, we're teaching him down. Uh, we say down when they, he jumps up on us and he jumps up on the kids, he, you know, he was jumping up a lot. So we started saying down for that just because it was an automatic thing. So we say down. And then when we want him to lay down on the floor, we say lay. What else does he know? He knows stay, he sit, he's learning heal, he's learning leave it, and he knows drop it pretty well too. It's not always 100%. Usually we'll say drop it and he'll like begrudgingly, oh, I just threw a brush. He'll more so begrudgingly give it up. But I mean, he still does do a pretty decent job of dropping it. He doesn't like spit it out of his mouth, but he'll, he'll release it. And I practice that with his toys and with things that he shouldn't have, <laughs> making him drop it. Um, um, and leave it, like I said, the cats is his the bane of his existence when it comes to the leave it command. There's some, it's about 50-50 where sometimes I say leave it and he will totally turn away from the cats and walk over to me and I'm like, wow, big reward for him. And other times I say leave it and he's like, I just can't and he'll go for them but leave it when it comes to like other things he shouldn't eat he's getting pretty good at I don't think I mentioned but we had a couple scares with something he ate we don't even know what it is at this point something he ate outside we're thinking gave him an upset tummy 
Um, so I've been really working with the leave it when it comes to eating, when I see him eating stuff, branches, leaves, whatever, what have you. We're pretty quick to either distract him, make him, you know, move along and keep moving or tell him to leave it. And he's getting really good at just turning his head away and moving along and just leaving it be. So, so thankful for that because that was really difficult because it's like, I can't even go outside with you without like being on you 24 seven because you'll try to eat literally everything you should not. But what else does he know? Um, learning heal and learning to like walk and whatnot, that's going really good. And yeah, nothing too crazy when it comes to commands, just basic commands to have good manners and to listen. Trying to teach him to be quiet when he barks too, because sometimes he'll get to bark in. He's not really a big barker, which I'm thankful for, but when people come onto our property, he's pretty, pretty, um, suspicious I should say is a good way to put it he's pretty suspicious so you know Amazon delivery that type of stuff he'll start barking and we're teaching him to be quiet and tell him when like hey I see that there's someone here but you can stop barking now and he's he's pretty good he's pretty good when you know, someone comes and delivers but anytime someone comes over if it's someone he doesn't know um, he can be pretty persistent so we're still working on that one but overall he's doing pretty good and we're just trying to uh, teach him that and also not only just me teach him we're also trying to make sure that my husband spends time training him and also the children so that he learns to obey them as well and you know respect their their words as well so trying to get the children which is always tricky because you know kids try and they're super excited but they might not always you know reward or tell them the same you know commands and or you know correct them and stuff like that so i still have to be there with the children but i do try to you know bring them in and have them help me with the training oh yeah we also do the the hide and seek the kids love it and it's been it's been a bit of a a task to train him but he's doing really good now where uh, they'll go and hide somewhere in the house and they'll just yell out, Zoro, come find me. And he'll go and find them and they'll have some he'll, They'll have some of his kibble there to reward him. And the kids love that and he loves that. So that's a fun game that they can play and wit do with him to kind of help train him to play hide and seek or to find them if we need, ever needed it. But it's a great way to kind of get his mind working and make him kind of figure out where they are and sniff them out. Um, and it's a they love playing hide and seek. So the fact that they can play hide and seek with their dog puts them over the moon. They're really excited about that. Okay, so I am about out of time and I've only done, oh my goodness, this is gonna take so long. <laughs> I've only done one. I thought I would get a lot more done and I guess I'm not quite at the half hour. I'm at like at 20 minute mark if you don't really count the time I was interrupted by a child and the time, you know, the time it took me to start. But still, I was trying to keep my recording time to half an hour because we got places to go after nap. So I gotta get, I gotta get moving. But I'll at least finish this one. <laughs> Like I said, I really thought I would get more done in a half hour. Like I've been, my hand's been moving the whole time I've been talking, but I still only did one. There's a lot, there's a lot of brushes that are dirty. Holy cow. I have been needing to do this for a long time. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a part two of this, who knows. But yeah, besides that update when it comes to the dog, um, I don't really have too much of an update. We're coming up to the end of our school year with Olivia and Gideon. I think Gideon will technically be in um, kindergarten this upcoming school year, but we've done kind of kindergarten with him this past year. Um, so we're coming up to the end of that and that's been fun. All the animals are doing good, as I, I think I already mentioned. We have one rabbit, two pigs, and the pigs are getting older, so any day now they could start making babies and we could have piglets, so the kids are really excited about the prospect of baby pigs. And we have chickens and we did an incubator. I think right before the, the dog came in February, we had put, or I guess in January, we put eggs in the incubator and then in February they all hatched. So we had ba we have baby chicks that are getting older now. And I already said we have one rabbit that's doing great. She's a big, big girl now. We don't have two rabbits. We have a rabbit for a pet for Olivia, but we the reason we brought the rabbit into our uh, family is because we use the rabbit droppings the rabbit poop for fertilizer it's amazing fertilizer and we just go around whenever like we put a bin underneath her rabbit hutch and whenever it fills up we'll go around and just put it all over the trees and the plants that we want to grow well and boy do they grow well i'm always amazed i even did on not even on purpose we had a little experiment where I had this row of um, snap peas and Olivia was like spreading it out and just dumped a bunch in like one spot between two plants and I was like oh it's fine like a little bit won't hurt it but I was like we'll see if that makes a difference and sure enough those two the like pile literally it was a pretty decent pile the pile of poop the two plants that it was between uh, they're the biggest plants 
in that garden box. So it works very well. Um, oh yeah, and then the garden, I had such amazing plans to have a big old garden this year. And then the dog came and like, I can't even breathe. So all those plans have went to the wayside. I'm starting to get, like I said, a handle of things where I feel like I could get out in the garden, but I'm a little torn and unsure of how to work having a garden with a dog because he doesn't understand that they're raised garden beds and they're not even that raised. It's just like a foot off the ground. So he walks all over them and walks on the plants. So that's not working out very well. So I think we're actually going to move because I was thinking about just putting up a fence, but I think it might be easier to move the garden a little bit over where there's it's already fenced in a little bit farther away. So I think we might be doing that, but I mean, the garden beds are there. I'm starting to get the itch. I mean, I really enjoy planting stuff and growing things. I'm starting to get that itch where I really wish, wish I had stuff out in the garden. So I might try and grow a little bit this year. I won't do much though, just because with the dog, it's hard. Like anytime I go over there to want to plant or to water something or to work in the garden, Zoro comes over and just stomps over it also. I don't know, that the, the garden, unexpectedly is taking a back burner this year. I really didn't think, I thought this year I would go all out with the garden. I prepared uh, six, no, nine. I had nine garden beds all kind of ready to go for summer and then the dog came and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, we might have to move all of those. Thankfully, they're just like, uh, like I said, they're a foot and they just sit on top of the dirt. So I can move them. It's a little bit tedious because it does have a decent amount of dirt in them, but I can move them and I think we might do that at the end, probably like middle summer towards the fall. I think we're going to put the pigs where I want the garden to be and let them really dig it up and spend some time rooting it up to kind of till up the earth and then move the garden in there whenever they're done over there. But uh, yeah, it's a little disappointing. So I don't know if I'm going to have a garden this summer, which I'm a little bummed about, but Oh well, one of these years I'll be able to have a garden, I guess. But with that said, that's my very relaxed way of telling you guys what my month has been. I relax, I say relax because I'm just sitting here cleaning brushes and talking to you about what's been going on. But I feel like it's also a little bit all over the place and maybe chaotic, so I'm sorry if that's the case. But I do see that my youngest, Sophia, is waking up, so I gotta get going. And I almost managed to get through two of these. I got through all of this, but this one, let me pick a, a, one of my favorite brushes and I'm gonna clean that, but I'm gonna have to do finish that one later and then I got four more to go. But I did get a lot done. I'll have to show, put a little insert here in how much, or well, let me just hold it up. Who needs to put an insert, Katie? It's not that much. Ugh. This is how much I managed to get clean in half an hour. Doesn't feel like a lot, but at least it's something. I will take that. So yeah, with that said, I'm just gonna wrap it up here. I hope you guys liked this video. It was very nice getting to just sit here and chit chat with you guys as I get through these brushes because usually I'm just like doing it by myself and it's a very tedious task. Obviously, it took me 30 minutes to do just like, I don't know, one, two, maybe two clumps of brushes. So it's a very tedious task and it was kind of nice getting to just sit here and talk to you guys. So maybe I'll do that again and do like a will I bite. We'll see if you guys see another video like this, but thanks for keeping me company while I did these brushes and I hope I did not bore you. Uh, feel free to let me know any recommendations you have when it comes to raising a puppy down below, raising a Doberman, what happened. You. I had someone leave a previous uh, in one of my previous videos when I mentioned we brought home a puppy and saying um, like as a vet tech I think just giving me some pointers on like making sure they don't eat stuff and I just want to say thank you so much for that comment because it really made us be very careful with him and keep our eye on him a lot more than I think I would have before that comment and it also made us get pet insurance because <laughs> As you, I've already said, we've gone to the vet, or emergency vet, and then we went to the vet once for a upset tummy because of something he ate. And that was when I wasn't watching him, which I can tell you right now, I have my eyes on him, and when he's not in his crate, 95% of the time, there's very little times when I actually don't have my eyes on him. And it usually has to do with when the uh, another child has an emergency or I just have to run to the bathroom and I can't manage to put him in his crate. But anyway. All that to say, I really appreciate that comment and she just gave me a lot of helpful advice when it comes to, you know, what to look out for and what to make sure we keep out of, you know, his reach and make sure he doesn't eat. So anyway, with that said, if you have any other advice, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. And with that said, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye guys.